This is Eddie Foy's world, and welcome to it. Eddie Foy, raised in a family rich in entertainment history, realized early on that he was destined to contribute to his family legacy. The Foy family has been entertaining the world before vaudeville and continues to be an artistic influence today. Every time I look at you, boy, you get to look more like a sea lion. Of course, you know, you know what a sea lion is. Oh, yes, well, I know what a sea lion is. What is a sea lion? Sea lion? Yes. I didn't ask you to do it now, Eddie. Take it easy out here, friend. Oh, 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 oh there Very good, Eddie. Very good. Eddie Foy started out his career as an actor, portraying a variety of different roles. But he realized his calling was behind the camera. Suppose you boys spread the word around that Steve Bolton is paying real good odds to anyone that can call the place that we're going to and name the day that we're arriving. You know, I gave up my job when I got into uniform. Why don't you give yours up, bookie boy? Why don't you keep your nose out of my business? Take it easy, Bowman. Brooklyn didn't mean no harm. Eddie Foy started his career as a casting director at Screen Gems in 1963, and by 1965, Chuck Freeze, president of Screen Gems, hailed Eddie as the most instinctive casting director for finding new talent. I was given the assignment to find a girl to play Gidget. In those days, Gidget was the top, top, top movie. I saw close to 4,500 girls. I read, we auditioned, we interviewed, and I went to every workshop in Southern California. Eddie Foy III was standing outside um, of the workshop the first night that I came, and he asked me if I would come on an interview the next day. And she said yes. And I can tell you the next words were, how would you like to be Gidget? I went into this, to this meeting and um, there were wall-to-wall -wall women, actresses, that, were all, that looked like actresses were supposed to look. Mostly blonde and, and really, really pretty and they all had portfolios of their, you know, 8 by 10 glossies. And, <laughs> and I had a wallet with some pictures of my friends standing next to a car. You know, and I, I did have my beach bag though because I was going to go right to the beach that, that day so that it wasn't a total waste. Monday morning at 9 o'clock, I walked into Screen Gems to Millie Gussie's office, who was the head of casting. I said, I've got Gidget. You can't have Gidget. I said, I've got Gidget. You don't even have to test anybody. I've got it. I said, what are you doing there? He says, I'm here to deliver some pictures to you. I said, what's your name? He said, Fred Forrest. Are you an Indian by any chance? And he said, actually, I have Indian blood in me. And, and, and I took him to Larry Thurman. They did, I think, one or two days of tests with him. He got the role, and that was the beginning of Fred Forrest. He was uh, delivering pictures to me. And that expression, magic, does happen in our business. It does happen. And, and, and when it happens, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. The story that is quite famous about this person is when I was called uh, to meet an actor. And this young actor came into my office and I sat there and I talked to him and I said, hi, how are you? And this is exactly the interview. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm fine, how are you? What? I'm, I'm fine, how are you? Well, what are you doing in Los Angeles, California? I um, came out to you know, test for a thing and then I'm gonna get back to New York where I can play the piano. Play the piano. Uh, play the piano. You're testing. You're testing. What are you testing? Uh, over here. I'm testing for the thing over here. Do you like New York? No, I, I, I love New York. I don't like California. Anything you want to ask me? No. Nope. Oh. Okay. Thank you. President of the studio called and said, "Well, what did you think?" I said, "I think Dustin Hoffman's the dumbest man and the dullest man I've ever met." That's a true story. <laughs> Schmeldrick that I am. I, I I missed completely. I didn't see it. But in, in, if I may say to get off the hook, he's, he's just proven himself to be one of the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant talents of our time. The personality test can make or break the actor, unlike the acting scene. Now, let me tell you why. 
the minute that you give an actor an acting scene and they've rehearsed and everything, they're coming in pre-prepared. They're coming in to do the work. That's what we call the work. So they're giving it their all. And sometimes, no matter what happens, they miss. And you know inside your heart they're better than what you're seeing up on the screen. You will then after the screen test is over, you will tell everybody, I'm doing another personality test because I want to get this out of this particular actor because I believe that. And nine times out of ten, when we did that, it worked. An integral part of Eddie's legacy is to teach. Eddie loves to teach the heart and soul of the entire casting process. He counsels actors to believe that as professionals, they must be motivated by their passion, accompanied with a healthy lifestyle, and not be motivated by the glamour. Their first interview is going to be a picture, a resume, that I read from the bottom up. Now, I know a lot of casting directors will start reading the picture from the front and then go to, I don't. I go from the very bottom, special skills, all the way up to finally the person's name. And I don't even know if I'm looking at a man or a woman. And so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see something in there, short order chef. I'll say, God, I want to meet this person. And then will come this incredibly pretty lady or a guy that weighs 980 pounds, and we'll talk about making hamburgers for an hour. Eddie's 30-year casting career has been fulfilling both creatively and civically. He has cast some of America's most beloved television shows and dramatically acclaimed miniseries and feature films. He has experienced great pride in knowing that the award-winning Tracy Thurman story instigated the sweeping legal reform for the protection of the battered wife. But his greatest joy is teaching students about the acting profession. The students discover within themselves questions they never would have thought to ask.